Now, when I grew up, again, less than a mile from here, I had absolutely no idea that Johann Peter Rockefeller landed here in Ringo's in the Ammo Valley in the 17th century. The Dones were fighting against people who were rebelling against the government. The Dones might have seen Washington and them as traitors against the government. And we came across this sign that says the Continental Lane. This is the road right here which Washington's armies began its march to Trenton on December 26, 1776. That says, here lies the famous Tory and outlaw Moses Stone. Notice they say Tory and outlaw. It's very interesting. Welcome to this first episode of Hidden History America, where we're going to tell you the untold story behind the story you thought you knew. Here we are at the bank of the Delaware River. On Christmas Day, 1776, George Washington crossed right here and marched his troops south to Trenton to successfully attack the British, changing the entirety of the American Revolution. Almost everybody knows this story, but almost nobody knows about the events surrounding this event that enabled Washington's success. For example, maybe 11 miles from here, there was a raid that happened 11 days before which helped Washington succeed. At the same time, there was a family in Pennsylvania here that actually almost stopped Washington in his tracks. So come join us here at this first episode of Hidden History America, where we tell you the untold story behind the story you thought you already knew. Here I am at what the sign calls an authentic reproduction of one of the barges that actually Washington used to cross the Delaware over here. First of all, it's miraculous that this thing even floated, much less carried people and equipment across the Delaware all night long in the wind, in the hail, across ice, chaos, fear, cold, frustration. Washington was losing the war. This is what helped us win. This flat, weird looking floating barge helped us win. But what also helped us win are some of these untold stories, including Geary's Raid. So come join us. We're going to go take a look and talk about some people that you probably don't even heard of before that helped Washington cross the Delaware successfully and was equally as important as this flat, weird-looking barge. So here we are in the middle of the Ammo Valley, in the middle of a development. And just up these stairs, and at the end of the pathway, is a gravesite like you've never seen before. We just came from the Delaware River, where Washington crossed to attack the British on Christmas Day, 1776. 11 days before, on December 14th, there was a raid that took place just over here, which changed the course of history. Come and check it out. When I was growing up as a kid, not far from here, this development didn't exist. So I didn't even know you could get back here when I was young. Much less know that just around this ridge over here is the most amazing little grave site of this guy. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what happened and why it's so important to American history. So come on along. On December 1776, the Americans decided they had enough of this raiding. And so Captain John Schenck of the Amwell Militia gathered his troops together to put an end to it right here at this spot. And they ambushed Geary's platoon of Queens Lake Dragoons right here. And Captain Schenck shot Cornet Geary, who was in charge of the group, in the head and buried him in a shallow grave right here on field. 
for many years, people reported ghost sightings out in this area, and nobody believed that this even existed until around 1907 or so. One of the ancestors of Cornet Geary, his great great nephew, I think it was, great great grandnephew, came here, found the guy's grave, and created a new marker. You can see right here to the memory of Cornet Francis Geary, 16 Queens Light Dragoons, born in 1752 killed in action right here in the service of King George III on December 14th, 1776. So as you can see, according to this plaque, this raid helped Washington conceal his boats leading up to the Christmas Day attack on Trenton in 1776. So few people know about this important part of American history and how it contributed to making our country what it is today. Next, we're going to go not a mile or two from here and see the gravesite of Captain John Shank, the guy who shot and killed Coronet Francis Geary. So we're going to take a quick detour here. We were first going to go to the grave of Captain John Shank, but instead we're going to stop just a mile short of there at a very interesting part of American history that happened here that most people don't know about. In fact, I grew up less than a mile from here. I didn't even know about it until just a few years ago. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you what I mean. It's pretty impressive. Take a look. Now, when I grew up, again, less than a mile from here, I had absolutely no idea that Johann Peter Rockefeller landed here in Ringo's in the Ammo Valley in the 17th century. And in 1906, John D. Rockefeller had every single Rockefeller from across the country gather here and commemorate this giant stone. Now I'm six foot three, and this thing is a good foot, foot and a half higher than me, and at least I'd say 12 feet wide. This is a huge memorial. Now from what I've read, this is actually incorrect. From what I understand, the Rockefellers are buried somewhere in a farm nearby, but nobody really knows where. So John D. Rockefeller got this wrong. However, he did land here and he did own a whole ton of property. So it's very interesting to know that I just didn't even know this, and I don't know anyone who even knew hardly, that the Rockefellers landed here in the early 18th century before America even existed. Here we are at the grave of Captain John Schenck. Captain Schenck is the guy who actually shot and killed Coronet Geary, and he's buried just two miles from here. So first of all, I think it's very interesting that they're buried pretty close to each other. Second of all, Captain Schenck is probably single-handedly most responsible for allowing Washington to hide the boats and successfully attack the British. So here we have a man that almost nobody knows about, buried in this tiny cemetery, and it says here on the grave, he's a Revolutionary War soldier, Captain John Schenck, 3rd Regiment, Hunterdon County Militia. He served from 1775 to 1783. He served for longer than the entire length of the American Revolution. And he, as much as anybody, really helped make America what it is today. So I think it's kind of a shame that most people don't know about him, but we're here in this show to honor people like him who made us the country we are today. Washington crossing Delaware was actually kind of a remarkable thing. It wasn't him in a boat like you see in the pictures where he's all patriotic and everyone's certain of themselves. It was 12 hours, about 2,700 troops in the dead of night in rain and hail and the river here was covered in ice. All night long, these troops were crossing right here quietly it's an absolute miracle in the first place that this even happened. But what almost nobody knows is that there's a family not far from here in Pennsylvania that actually almost stopped Washington in his tracks. So come with us where we discuss the Dome Gang, the unbelievable untold story of America's earliest enemies.
Here we are at the Quaker Meeting House in Plumstead, Pennsylvania. Why are we here? This building was actually built in 1752, so that when the American Revolution started, this building was already 20 years old. This is the church, we believe, that was the church of the Doan family. The Doan family are extremely important to American history, and almost nobody knows about them. Why are they so important? What happened was, before the revolution, and just during the beginning of the revolution, Washington's army, who were considered rebels at the time and might even be considered terrorists by today's standards, taxed local people to fund the army. The Dones refused to pay because they didn't believe in war. And so they were kicked off their property. The children of the Dones, they rebelled against Washington. They became loyalist spies, and the eldest was named Moses. Almost everyone knows that Washington crossed the Delaware to attack the British. Almost nobody knows that Moses Stone, Eagle Spy, watched Washington cross the Delaware. And since he was a loyalist against Washington, he galloped furiously to Trenton to tell the commander in charge that Washington was coming. So he wrote a note and said, Washington will be here before long. Get ready, Doan. The commander in charge took the note, folded it, and put it in his pocket and kept playing cards because he didn't want to be bothered on Christmas. Washington then successfully attacked the British, changing the tide of the American Revolution. After the war, the Dones became outlaws. Two of them were hanged, one disappeared, one fled to England, I think one or two fled to Canada. The two that were hanged were buried just outside the cemetery over here because at the time they were outlaws and they had killed people and they weren't allowed to be buried inside the Quaker cemetery. So let's go ahead and meet the Dones on the other side of the cemetery wall. So here we are at the graves of two of the Dones who were executed in Philadelphia. There's an old legend that says never sneak up on a Done dead or alive. So we, uh, we announced our visit before we got here just in case. You know, I'll be, I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure what to say about this. You know, it's very sad. I'm sitting on the cemetery wall uh, of the Plumstead Meeting House here in Plumstead, Pennsylvania, the Quaker Meeting House in Plumstead, Pennsylvania, sitting on the cemetery. Over here to my right is the actual cemetery itself, and down here to my left are two of the Dones who were executed in Philadelphia and buried here somewhat unceremoniously in 1788. The Dones, for better or worse, made America the country that it is today. They tested Washington's mettle by spying on him and almost subverted his entire cause. And I think it's really important that more people know who the Dones were and their contribution to American society that we know it today. So we are grabbing some lunch at the Pipersville Tavern, which isn't too far from where I'm standing right now. And we told the bartender girl named Mandy about this TV show we were making about the Dones. And she said, oh, I know, the Dones Cemetery headstone is buried right over here somewhere. We didn't believe her. So here we are in the middle of this field in Plumstead, Pennsylvania, and we're gonna try to find Moses Dones' lost headstone. Apparently, it's back here at this hedgerow somewhere. So come on and take a look and let's see if we can find it. So here we are, we finally, after searching for a while, found this Moses Doan headstone in the middle of this hedgerow. Apparently nobody knows exactly where he's buried because a farmer moved this stone into the middle of this hedgerow from where he's originally buried and it's unclear where he actually is. However, it says, here lies the famous Tory and outlaw, Moses Stone. Notice they say Tory and outlaw, it's very interesting. Hunted down, captured and killed after he had surrendered on Tohicon Creek, August 23rd, 1788. Viet Armistice. Some weird writing, I have no idea what it says or means. So the leader of the Dones, Eagle Spy, was shot and killed. This stone was buried somewhere over here dragged here because it was in the farmer's way and left exposed to the elements in a random hedgerow. There is no marker anywhere to indicate that this is even here. I've spoken to a number of locals here in the Plumstead area and they all agree that the Dones were bad news. These were not good people. These were murderers and these were thieves. However, 
they also played a critical role in shaping this country, for better or for worse, by spying against Washington. And the fact that this stone is just lying here, exposed to the elements, and this random hedgerow in this random farm in the middle of Pennsylvania is such a shame. It's a real pity that almost nobody knows about this, not to mention Geary's raid. So what we have is a broad context from which to understand how Washington crossed the Delaware. But more importantly, across America and around the world, there are these hidden stories so we can all learn about the untold stories behind the stories that we thought we all knew. Most stories don't happen in a bubble. For the most part, any story that happens has a context behind it. Oftentimes, we don't know what that context is. And more often than not, actions that seem tiny and inconsequential at the time can have huge ramifications moving forward. For example, not opening a piece of paper versus opening a piece of paper can literally change world history. The fact that Washington crossed the Delaware is, like I said earlier, really an amazing feat by itself. But what's more amazing is what nobody knows about. There are probably other hidden stories around Washington crossing Delaware. We don't know yet. We're looking forward to learning more as time goes on. Meanwhile, I'm gonna ask you in the audience, if you're watching this, to please consider looking at the historical events that you know of, researching the events that happened around that and letting us know so we can come to you and tell your hidden history story that we think and you think everyone should know about. My name is David Deutsch for Hidden History America. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great one. You ready? Here we go. Hang on. Action. So here we are at the K. <laughs> at the Kmart. Kmart. And. Act. <laughs> okay. This and is going in the bloopers, isn't it? Stop. And action. I can't do it. You're laughing. I demand better treatment. <laughs> That's going in the blue first. Action. What most people don't know is that 11 days before Washington crossed the Delaware. So, in fact, I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, and action. Just up this path, right behind you, where Brian is sitting. <laughs> oh, I got it, I got it. And action. <laughs> 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 okay, come on. All right, all right, hold on, hold on. Professional, ready? Yeah, I'm trying getting, to be professional. Getting paid a lot of money for this shit. Yeah, ready? sure I am. And, <laughs> and it's action. not about money. Come on. And, and action. We just came from.